Hello React Native developers, welcome to Can It Be Learned React Native. In this episode, we look at an old recipe only to improve its solution by tenfold. So let's get to work. Guys, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. In this week's episode, we are looking at the Google Chrome drag to sort user interaction. So I can click on a tab here and drag it around to change its order. And I can also drag it to scroll to the top or the bottom of the list. And we've done this example already with reanimated one. Now we're going to do it with reanimated two and take it much further. We're going to take it further in three directions. First, in terms of capabilities. So when Reanimated 2 was announced, they announced the scroll to method to scroll a scroll view on the UI thread. And I was trying to think about what would be a good demo, a good use case for uh, to test this function. And I immediately thought about this um, drag to sort feature and the ability to scroll a scroll view on the UI thread. So here, when we're going to drag, we're going to be able to command from the UI thread the scroll view. And I'm pretty excited about this because the, so far, the communication with the scroll view has always been uh, in one direction. So we can bound, bind an animation value that gives us the current position of the scroll view. But we were never able to write a new position from the UI thread. So now we're going to be able to uh, part of the user interaction give the scroll view position. So that's pretty exciting. And then we're going to also taking it further in terms of how easy the implementation is because we can have complex animation values to keep the state of our uh, tabs. So meaning wh what is the order of which tab and because we're going to use animation worklets, so we can write JavaScript directly to deal um, with such algorithm to reorder the tiles. This is going to make the implementation an order of magnitude simpler than when we reanimated one. And because we're using animation worklets, we're not going to need. So in V1, this was a fairly complex algorithm to implement that required us to create hundreds and hundreds of animation nodes, which had a substantial impact of on, on performance. Now that we use uh, animation worklets, the performance should be dramatically improved. So how would we do this in React Native? We already looked at a drag to sort example with Reanimated 2, and there was the Duolingo drag to sort. In the Duolingo example, the challenge was that the layout was completely dynamic. So we had tiles, but we didn't know the length of the tile. Here, the tiles are actually squares. So that makes it uh, much easier the, to, to do the drag to sort. The difficulty, the uh, subtlety comes in when we want to do the scrolling while dragging. So we're going to keep the state of our list into an animation value. And this is how the animation value looks like. It's a map where the index is the ID of the tab and the value is the order of the tab. And so this is the state of our list that we're going to manipulate while doing the drag to sort. From there, we need two symmetric functions. One, to get a position on the screen based on the order of a tab. So if the, the tab is the first tab, the position is going to be x0, y0, probably. And then if it's a second tab, depending on the number of colon, and then we need the opposite function, where given a position, we can um, guess what would be the order of the tab. Next, we need to look at the ordering of the tabs. So when dragging a tab, if it's over another tab, we switch the order of the dragging tab with the one we are overlaying. 
And if we are a tab and our gesture is not active, but the order has changed, we transition nicely to the new position. New order mean, means new position, and we're going to spring nicely to the new position. So to deal with the scrolling of a tile, so here we have the visible container. This is the content. So we have um, some content which is either above or below the container in the scroll view. And so we drag the tile at positions where we want to uh, either scroll up and down. And so here we have our lower bound position, which is this scroll Y animation value. We bind the uh, scroll Y to an animation value. So let me, so we have the lower bound which is here at, which is a scroll Y and the upper bound is the, so upper bound is the lower bound plus the container height. So lower bound plus container height. Now we also need the mean and max scroll value. So scroll y mean equals zero and the max is content height minus the visible this part. So minus container height. Now so the moving tile we have is associated to a translate Y animation value. And so what we need to check is if translate Y is lower than I'm thinking, yes, because scroll Y is a positive animation value. So let me write it here. So if translate Y is less than lower bound, we need to scroll in the bottom direction. And if translate Y is greater than upper bound, we need to scroll in this direction, right? So it means we are scrolling here. So here we simply need to find out what is the diff by how many points we need to scroll. Oops. And it's simply going to be so lower bound minus translate y. So lower bound here translate y. So we take the difference. And we scroll to scroll y dot so it's gonna scroll y it's gonna be dot value but plus or minus the difference. We are scrolling up, and here same if we scroll down, we add no the diff is translate y minus upper bound and we scroll down plus diff. So this is how we're going to deal with the scrolling. But what do you guys think? Can it be done in React Native? Let's have a look. And before we get started, one thing, if you're interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I hope that you will check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS even on low-end devices. So if you're interested to learn the fundamentals, I hope that you will check it out at startreactnative.dev. All right, let's get started. Here we have our boilerplate project, which is available in the video description in case you want to code along with this example. So I have a list here of websites. 
and have the tile component which displays the website into a web view. And I wrapped the tiles into a sortable list component, which is a component we are going to build. So not much yet into this component. So we have here what we're going to use as a state of our view. So we create an object where we have as a key the ID of the tab and the order as a value. And here, by default, the order is the index, but we're going to transform this into an animation value and update dynamically the order based on the ID. The, um, the items are wrapped into an item component, which is empty for now, it's just a view. This is where we're going to build the gestures and animations. And the scroll view, we since we do the layout ourselves, the components are going to be layouted by us, not the scroll view, not by React Native. We force the content container style to be of the height of all the, the item divided by the number of columns. So here I have a config file. So this is, it declares the state of our list, which is this positions object where the ID is the key, the ID of the tab is the key and the order is the value. Here we have some uh, layout values, the size of the tab, number of colon, some animation configuration. And let's start speaking of layout. Let's just start. We know that we need to be two functions, two functions. One given an order layout the position. And here right now it's layouted by React Native. And then given a layout uh, position, find the order. So let's do, so we need to do get position, get order. So we'll have two functions that we will run on the UI thread. So get position. And so given an order, we're going to return a position and it's a worklet. And the symmetric function for this is get order given a position. So X, Y, we're going to return an order. So these are the two functions we need to build. So get position is uh, fairly easy. So X for X, we take the modulo of the number of columns. So we take order modulo call and we multiply it by the size of a tab. So let's say here col column is at two. So we have order first item order equals zero. So here we would have zero, right? order equals one, we will have one, so it will be layouted. Then the third one order will be uh, two, so it will be zero and so on. And if you can do it with column equals three, it's gonna be the same. So you'll, you'll have uh, zero times size, one times size, two times size, zero times size, and so on. And so it will repeat itself nicely. And for y, I think it's just the same, but divided. So we divide order by the number of columns to find the height. But here, because we, so we might have two, three columns, we need to take the uh, floor value and multiply it by size. And so we can try this one quickly. So now instead of letting React to the layout, we're going to do the layout ourselves. So we can add a style. And the style is going to be, let me extract it here. It's going to become a position absolute. We want to position it ourselves. So top zero, left zero, and with height is size. And if we want to try, so we get, we do position equals get position. And so here we have the state of our scroll view, right? Which is 
this object here. So again, the state or scroll view of our sortable list is a mapping between IDs and orders. So we can get the order by doing positions at ID, which we get as a property. We get it here as a property. So get position, we need to import. So they are all overlaid on top of each other. That's expected. Now let's translate by position. So translate x position.x translate y position.y. So that looks good. Now the layout is done. We have control over the layout, which is what we want. Now based on the position, let's get the order. Um so the column is, we are going to divide x by size and we're going to round the value. The row, we also going to divide y by size. And so we return Um, rows times number of columns, right? Because so if you have two columns per row, you have two items. So if you're at uh, row one, column zero, you need, so you would have row equals one, but times the number of columns, so that would be two. So that would be row times number of columns plus column. And we can try if this function works quickly by um, getting the order from the position and check if it's the same. So let's just, just to test. So now if I pass, I get the order from P1 and get the position again, the layout should be the same. Um, so I would say position is get position of get order from p1x p1y so it looks good right perfect so now the state of our list so we're going to add the gesture we're going to modify things so this thing here needs to become an animation value so I'm going to create use shared value. So it's a, here I'm typing it because a sign is of type any. So we need to specify it. And so in item, this becomes a shared value positions. And here positions also positions dot value positions dot value. Okay. Did we break something? No. Okay. Looking good. So now let's make the tabs draggable, right? Now that we have our animation value. So we're gonna create two animation values, translate x, translate y, and wrap everything into a pan gesture handler. So let's do translate x is a shared value. And we can even, what we can do, let me move this here. We can assign its default value to be position.x. And same for y. Um, so this becomes an animated view. Here we can use translate X, translate Y directly, but don't forget the dot value. 
And so this becomes a use, since now we are using animation values, this becomes a use animated style. Um, actually, I'm going to do, do it like this. It looks like a syntax error somewhere. up so still looking good now let's i mean cannot wait to drag drag things around so let's uh, add the pan gesture handler and as you guys know already single child of a pan gesture handler needs to be an animated view so let me just <clears throat> pan gesture handler so animated view so the animated view is just a wrapper. So we're going to do style equals style sheet absolute fill. Here it's just a wrapper because we need the children child to be an animated view. So pan gesture handler on gesture event. And we're going to create our gesture handler. So on gesture event, use animated gesture handler. Okay. And so we need a couple of events. Um, I mean, one we can do to test if everything works is to do when the gesture is active. Translate, so we get translation X, translation Y. So you can do translate X dot value equals translation X dot value, same for Y. Oh, uh, sorry. Translation X, same for Y. Okay. So we can move things around. Uh, there is an offset problem. Well, it makes sense because we always start from zero. So we can do, and there is there are many issues, but that's one of them. So we need on start to keep the offset because it thinks that it's always starts at zero, zero. And so we're gonna here get the context from reanimate. So if you are new to Reanimated 2, context in Animated Gesture Handler makes our Gesture Handler stateful. So it's a variable that we get for every event and that allows us to keep a state across uh, different events from the Gesture Handler, across frames. So context.x is trans, uh, translate x.value and you see it's going to be nicely set to the default position at the beginning and then we keep track of it nicely so it's going to be cool so up same for y uh, and so here we do context.x context.y context which we get as a parameter and that we need to type for X and Y. So let me check. So default here is pan gesture handler event, and then the type of our context. Up. So we have number and Y. So this is the type of the context, and this is the type of our gesture handler. It's a pan gesture handler event, which is a default value for this generic type so let's have a look so i think that's good so you see now it's nicely offset uh so a couple of things we many things we need to do where to start uh, maybe when we release we're gonna drag back uh, to the position so on end we're gonna take the position of the item the position might have changed. Right now, we don't change it yet, but it might. 
And so, and then we're gonna go to this position. So we get the new position, so destination, let's call it, destination from the, so we do get position from position.value.id. Here it didn't change, but it might change in the future. So we cannot take this one because we're gonna swap things and then we just animate to this position. So we do translate x.value equals with timing of destination.x. I have the animation config in the config file and same for y. Up, perfect. And now we need, so if I'm dragging, the tile should be on top. And also I should maybe scale it a little bit. So we need to know if the gesture is active or not. So I'm gonna create an animation value. Is gesture active? Default value is false. So when we start the gesture, we set it to true. And when we finish the animation, so here we have a callback parameter, we can set it to false. Now we can use it for the Z index and the scale. So we're gonna have Z index. If is gesture active is true, it's 100, if not zero. And just for good measure, we can do the same with scale. So if the gesture is active, we increase by 10%. So 1.1, and if not, just one. So scale and Z index. Um, an yeah, okay. So you see now it's nicely on top. It also gets bigger and it's animates nicely back to position. Now, we need to swap things. So we need to swap things, check if things have changed. So based on this new position, we're gonna calculate the order. If the order has changed, we're gonna find which ID as the order we're on top of, we're overlaying and do a swap. So new order, so all order is position.value.id, perfect. And new order is, no, it's not. Um, new order. So we do get order on translate x.value and translate y.value. Translate x.value, translate y.value. Um, so if old order is different from new order, we need to find the ID to swap. So ID to swap. So we iterate over the positions. So we do a key, so we get all IDs from our animation value, so from positions.value. And we find the one which has the position new order. So key where positions dot value dot. So key equals uh, new order. So it's the one. So if this one returns a value, it's the value we need, the ID we need to swap. So here we can swap. So here we're gonna essentially, so rebuild an object. We need, it's like React. If we want the reanimated to react to the change of value, we need to clone the object because it's gonna look at the object identity. And to clone the object, in JavaScript, there are three ways to clone an object. Uh, we use the spread operator, right? I think the uh, older, the old school way to clone an object 
is to use object assign. And then the dirty way to uh, clone an object is to do JSON string, stringify, and JSON parse. Here, because it's an animation worklet, the spread operator is not yet supported. And here, I think because it's not using Hermes on iOS, I cannot do object assign because I think it works great on Android. So I'm going to do it since I cannot do way number one nor way number two. I'm going to go the dirty way, which is so new positions. So to clone the object, I'm going to do a JSON parse of JSON stringify of positions.value. Now we can swap. Oops. So new positions of ID. Yes, new position of ID is new order and new position of ID to swap is old order. And now we assign two positions. New positions. Um, so it's going to be hard to visualize actually if this works or not. What the only thing we are going to be able to visualize is that if I drop it here, it's going to drop over. So the Google tab is going to drop over the GitHub tab. Okay, that's good. And then it went down because this one has a higher Z index. I mean, they have the same same index, but because of the hierarchy in the tree. So this is good. So for instance, if I drop this one on top, I think YouTube should be on top. Perfect. So this is behaving as expected. Now, if the gesture is not active and the order has changed, we need to transition to the new position. So we're going to listen for change on the order. And this is where really you see, this is really where reanimated 2 is react on the UI thread essentially. Same way to think about side effects and, and um, yeah, and states. It's pretty cool. So we're going to list, so do use reaction, use animated reaction. And so the first argument of use animated reaction is the value we want to listen to. And if the, val the second argument is if the value has changed, the side effect we want to apply. So, so here, you know, we have a gesture handler and we can apply side effects. But then if the gesture is not active, how do we apply a side effect via use animated reaction? I find it cleaner. Yes. Yeah, I think it's the cleanest way to, to do it. Um, so we're going to listen at, at the order. To new, so positions.value.id, simply. And we're going to get a new order if it changes. And if it changes, we get the position for that order. So new position is get position of new order. And then we transition, translate X and translate Y to these values. So translate new position, translate X dot value with timing to new position dot X animation config Hop. same for y oops translate y need to import use animated reaction okay so now now i'm scared because now it should work let me reload let me do a fresh reload i'm scared i, I think it's not gonna work <laughs> Ah, no, I see it swaps nicely. And if I release, it goes back to position. Isn't that cool? It's fun, isn't it? There were no reasons to be scared about. And so fairly uh, simple mental model, fairly simple uh, implementation as well. Things also, the separation of concerns is also pretty good. 
So now, final step, let's do the scrolling. So let's bind an animation value to the scroll, and then let's do the computations to scroll properly the view. So this becomes an animated scroll view. To scroll the scroll view on the UI thread, we need a ref. I call it scroll view. And we're going to pass that ref to the item because the item is going to detect, di 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 uh, it's going to decide where to scroll. So scroll view is a use animated ref. And the ref is an anim animated scroll view. Okay, looks good. And this is our type, the type we pass as a property of item. So we have a scroll view. We also need the scroll Y value. So scroll Y animated shared value of number. And so we need the scroll y is here. So scroll y is use a shared value. And we can bind it to the scroll view via the on scroll event. So on scroll is use animated scroll handler yes and let me import it so what do we have here on scroll and that's great and then is it something like natty yeah is that no native event What's the shape of event content of set Y? And so here we can bind scroll Y dot value to Y. You guys are probably seeing seeing it already. I'm not seeing where the syntax error is. Okay, got it. You guys probably caught it before me. It's not native event, is it? Is it event? Okay. So here we should have the that was a, <laughs> that was a struggle. We need to pass the scroll y as property scroll y dot value. Okay. You see, this is where I mean here TypeScript is telling me about my mistakes. Here I didn't know the boilerplate for 
scroll view but TypeScript is giving it to us. This is where really, I mean, I know most of you are already convinced, but this is really where TypeScript shines. So now we have all the boilerplate we need to scroll up and down. Oh, we almost have all the boilerplate. What I want to do is to add some tiles so we can see actually we have like stuff to scroll up and down. So what I'm going to do is to clone here the tiles like two, three times. You can try twice. And um, so here, because the IDs are not unique anymore, I can just make it unique with index quickly. Something like this. Since each tile is using a web view, should be more like an image, I guess. It's gonna, it might be a, a lot, I think, to load at the same times. Lots of requests and all, I guess, the JavaScript that needs to be executed and so on. Okay. Because here in this little uh, container, there is actually potentially a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but that seems to work, so... Now we can do the scrolling back to item. If the gesture is active, let's check if we need to scroll. So we need the lower bound. The lower bound is scroll y. So scroll y dot value. And the upper bound is the lower bound plus the container height. So these are the boundaries where we're going to trigger the scroll. Actually, for the scroll down, so container height, here I want to trigger it before I reach uh, lower bound plus container height because, um, yeah, it's just going to make it more obvious if we start to scroll earlier, so I'm going to remove the size of the tab. We also know that the max scroll value is the content height minus the size of the viewport, so that's the maximum value we want to set for um, scroll Y, so that would be content height minus um, container height. And then when we we want to scroll down, we also we need to not scroll more than what is available. And so scroll left is max scroll minus what we scrolled already, which would be scroll y dot value. So we have our parameters. Now if translate y dot value is less than lower bound. Actually, I shouldn't start with this one because before we able to scroll down up, we should scroll down. So let me do if translate x dot value is greater than upper bound. That's the first one we're interested in. The diff we need to scroll to is um, it's um, we need to add upper bound minus translate y dot value. That's what we need to add. But we need to not add more than what is left to scroll. So we do min. of scroll left. That's good. And so we can assign it to scroll y. So scroll y dot value and we add diff. We need also to add it. So we need the translation of the tile that is, so we, we scroll, but we also need to translate the tile that uh, we are dragging to be in sync. So context.y is also plus diff. And of course, if we want this to, like we did here, to actually happen, we need to reassign here y. And so that's 
for the this is for what we're dragging. Now let's scroll the scroll view. So the components which we are not dragging. So scroll to first argument is the animated ref. So scroll view on the x axis zero, on the y axis scroll y dot value animate false because we do it ourselves step by step. So let's see if we can. So you see here, because we load so many tiles, I think we have some HTTP requests that fail, I think. So we, when we, we upper bound, No, that's, sorry, translate y.value minus upper bound. I got confused. So now it should scroll down nicely. And now that we know how to scroll down, let's see if we can, if we can scroll back up. So, um, if translate y is less, I mean, it's going to be very sim similar to this, but different values. So here it's going to be lower bound minus translate y dot value. And here we don't want to, the max value is lower bound. So zero if we are at the top. The diff here we subtract, we go the other direction and everything else looks good. So let's have a look. So here I'm going down nicely and I can go up, up to the top and drop. Isn't that cool? Pretty fun example. And really not uh, that complicated. The mental model and the implementation is uh, fairly lightweight. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. We took an old recipe to really improve its solution by an order of magnitude. We improved it in terms of capabilities because thanks to the scroll through function, in reanimated we now have bidirectional communication between the scroll view and the UI thread. So we can read, bind an animation value to a scroll view and read its value, but we can also tell the scroll view to scroll to a particular position. We also dramatically improved the solution in terms of how simple the implementation is because we can store the state of our list into a complex animation value, which was not possible before, and because we are writing the, all the logic in JavaScript to calculate, for instance, the order of a tile based on its position or the position of a tile based on its order. These things are fairly simple to do in JavaScript, and we also dramatically improved the performance by using animation worklets, where in reanimated v1, we would use hundreds and hundreds of animation nodes in order to build such a user interaction. So far, we are having a lot of success using Reanimated 2 to build uh, these cool examples. And we're going to continue to push further the envelope. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.